Hey everyone, Blake here. <clears throat> so, I was having some issues with terrains in Unity. The big thing that I really wanted was to create uh, terrains that would tile. All right, and that was a big issue for me. Now, the issue that I had was that the only way that I could externally edit the terrain data was as a raw data file, which could be read by the tool that I use, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, or GIMP. <clears throat> but the issue that I had with GIMP is that it only works on 8-bit um, grayscale files. So that's only uh, 256 layers of height, whereas the Unity terrain and Photoshop can do grayscale at 16-bit, which allows 65,536 different levels of height. So that is a significant enough difference that I you know, really cared because, you know, I would take a terrain and then I would get this 256 highest, um, you know, larger order of magnitude um, layers when I'd flip it, but then the texture that was flipped would come out very terraced. Hi there, dog. How you doing? So the <clears throat> problem was GIMP doesn't work on 8-bit, uh, or works only on 8-bit grayscale, um, doesn't work on 16-bit grayscale. So I said, well, why don't I take a look at the file format, see what's actually going on inside the file, what's what's the deal with these raw files, and can I manipulate them on my own? Turns out the raw files are very, very simple, and it was actually trivial for me to manipulate. So I wrote a program to manipulate them in about an hour, <clears throat> and I was able to use that to do the things that I needed to do, again, create terrains that I could tile and flip and whatnot. So, um, say we'll start with a terrain here, right? And I'm just gonna come up with some kind of border on that terrain that I would want to tile it on and make sure that I get a nice smooth tile. And, Watson, down you go, buddy. I know. You're the real star of the house. I totally get that, too, Pooch. Totally get that. Um, you it's his YouTube debut. Uh, we only got him a week and a half ago. And so, here we go. All right. So, just going ahead and creating an edge around this. And I don't particularly love using Unity's built-in terrain editor. I'd much rather go to like the USGS and get real dem data or from uh, NASA, right? They had some shuttle missions where they got some height data and being able to use that height data to get some really high quality, high fidelity um, terrains. But still a lot of times what I wanna do is, again, I want to be able to tile them so that I can have terrain that goes on forever or just, you know, if you're looking sitting down in this terrain, you can't see the edge of the world. <clears throat> so it's a very common thing, and it was an absolute problem, and uh, I'm not an artist. I don't have any particular need to get my own copy of Photoshop, so I didn't. Um, instead, I just was able to kind of convert the raw data into a standard PNG, and so I worked with it that way. So here's how this whole setup works. First of all, you create your terrain. Then <clears throat> you come over here and you export raw. 16-bit windows, the width and height are 513 by 513. Again, when I do terrain, it's normally 513, 1025, or 2049 are the three dimensions that I use. And so that's what this program is set up for. The program is MIT licensed open source, so if you want to add more supported resolutions, then be my guest. I'm going to go ahead and save that as train2.raw. And I am going to go to my desktop and open up the terrain folder. And so the question is, is what the heck is in the raw file? And the truth of the matter is it is extremely true to its name where <clears throat> I'm gonna select everything, go to my plugins, converter, and do ASCII to hex. Um, or ASCII to hex. Hello, ASCII to hex. Really? Because I can tell you that's not hexadecimal. Um, <clears throat> so what's interesting about this data though is looking through it, I could tell that it was raw byte, you know, it's a binary file. And um, 
when my hex editor was working, um, it became very obvious by looking at the file that it was just a plain old <clears throat> array of bytes, right? That's all it was, was a giant array of bytes. And then looking at the size, I could tell it was 513 by 513 by two, which would make sense for 16 bits, that's two bytes. And then 513 by 513 texture, that is the file size that we're dealing with. So if all of that lines up, it means that it is just uh, pixel after pixel of a texture map, basically, um, without any breaks. And um, <clears throat> so what I did is, instead of saying, all right, that's one gray channel from 0 to 65,535, I just broke that into a green channel and a red channel that go from 0 to 255. So... Um, the green is the most significant digit, the red is the least significant digit of that. Um, so what you do is you come to this Git repo, and this is again MIT licensed, and uh, you can go ahead and just clone that, download that, whatever. And I have a copy in my projects folder. Projects. And so we can see 16-bit to raw, and I'm going to go ahead and just open that puppy up. Here we go. All right. I'm going to hit start. <clears throat> the code behind this, again, very simple. If you look through um, a couple of C-sharp niceties and using some of the GDI or the, yeah, Windows graphics stuff in there, um, it's not even optimized. I didn't even bother. Um, so let's, all right, here we go. Here's my train2.raw, I open that up, and as you see, you can see the edge here, right, where, that I was painting, and that's all in the red spectrum, and then the stuff that gets higher starts getting in the greens a little bit, so it starts getting a little yellowy when you combine the red and the green, and so that's exactly what we're seeing here. So this is an actual PNG image of the terrain, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. <clears throat> And here it is, here's my train two. And I can open that with the GNU image manipulation program. And boom, here it is. And I can go in here, I can see the red channel, I can see the green channel. If I only want to focus on one channel at a time, I can do that. Um, the green channel, just you know, be careful because each uh, additional pixel in the green channel is 256 steps in the red channel, right? So if you crank up that green channel, um, things get really tall really fast. Um, but again, in the red channel, what's nice is you can come in here and you can smooth things out, right? You can run filters on it. You can do whatever it is that you need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what? I didn't like some of this stuff, so I'm going to erase, right? And I'm just going to clean out some of this, and it's going to look janky, and that's fine. I don't care. And I am also going to, because this has an alpha channel, uh, image mode, uh, where is it? Um, I just want to remove the alpha channel. Uh, can I do it from here? Uh, no, I cannot. Cannot remove the alpha channel from there. All right, well, where there's a will, there's a way. I'm going to grab my fill bucket, and I'm going to grab some black paint, and I'm just going to fill that in with black because I can't remember the GIMP command to remove an alpha channel off the top of my head, and it's not important for this demo. All right, so we just clean that up, get rid of the alpha channel. Okay, and we save and because this is GIMP, we do overwrite train two, right? And so that's this train. Now, I might also, I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste a new version. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this horizontally because I want to create, a, again, a tileable terrain. This just means that this kind of outside edge becomes something that I can tile. And so I will save that one, and I will export as, and I will go to my desktop, terrain, 
and I have this train to RG. So my program adds this RG suffix so that you know what it is, um, that it's a, a red green map, not instead of you know something else. Um, so I'm going to say dash H because I flipped that horizontally, and that's fine. You know whatever. And then I'm going to image transform flip vertically and export as. And instead of an H, that's a HV because I flipped it horizontally and vertically. And then I'm going to transform and flip it horizontally again, which means that it's back to its original. And so really it's terrain, terrain to dash V. Right, so I have my original, my original flipped on the vertical, my original flipped on the horizontal, and then flipped on the vertical and the horizontal. And again, so I'm just able to work with these like any other PNG image, doesn't take any kind of special processing, right? Super simple and easy. And then I can come back to the PNG tool, open up. All right, so open up the H for the height map and then notice that it says, okay, you probably wanna save that as the same name, but just as a raw, so I save that. Um, H, HV, save, train to, that's the original, so I'm going to overwrite the old one because I made changes to it, and then vertically flipped and saved it, and that's all there is to it, right? So in this case, I wanted to flip them, you could rotate them, you could do other things. Again, you can make kind of a standard edge so that you'll have something that's tileable as opposed to, you know, flippable, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, and so now we come back into Unity and we'll see how this works. All right, so we'll import the raw and we'll do this train2.raw. So we're bringing back in what we had previously exported. And sure enough, it's pretty similar, uh, except for we have this sharp uh, edge here and this is where our eraser tool really hit it. Um, <clears throat> all right, and so maybe we're gonna go ahead and create a new terrain. I don't want to use a child. That would be very unfortunate. Um, so we have a new terrain. And we'll put that at negative 500. And this one we will call regular. And then H flip. All right. And we're going to go ahead and load import raw the terrain to horizontal flips. There we go. And we'll import that. And we'll see, oh, I moved it, put it, moved it to the vertical position. All right, well, that's easy enough to handle. All right, so that way it was horizontal. All right, I know the exact size is 500, so I can get that lined up. And then actually my original my horizontal, oh, my Z was seven for some reason. Okay. And now you'll see that's beautiful. It lines right up. Um, that looks like a screaming Muppet. That's hilarious. Um, and you end up with this nice seamless join of these two terrains, right? And then you can continue to do that. So we'll go ahead and create a new terrain. And just so that we can do all of them, right? We're gonna do, that was the horizontal flip, so this is the vertical flip. We're gonna import the vertical flip and move it around a bit. Uh, yes, you look like you go there, right? And that's zero and that's 500, right? And so we're gonna call that V flip. Right, and then we're gonna create one more. HV flip. And we're going to import the HV. Right. And again, so what's really nice about this is that we're able to just use open source tools 
to be able to do the simple manipulation that we wanted to do outside of Unity instead of you know needing Photoshop or something like that that's specifically designed to work with 16-bit uh, grayscale images. So, you know, would you want to edit your terrain, you know, using two channels of a PNG? Eh, probably not. Um, it's That would be very unwieldy. But again, it's good for matching things up, you know, making sure that everything's aligned right and works. Because, again, um, that looks pretty darn good. So, you know, as you build out your worlds, you know, you really only created one terrain, but now if you look in this direction, you know, it looks like the land keeps going on and on. And the other th nice thing is <clears throat> you're no longer set at just this one terrain, right? It's a quick and easy way to make copies and, you know, manipulable copies of a terrain. And then you can go in and use your standard terrain tools and add, you know, whatever additional, you know, interest points and whatnot uh that you want to um and then all of the trains that are you know instance off of that will will take it on but then you still get you know visual variety between each of those so anyway it's a tool that i'm creating again because i had some issues where you know i had a main world that my actors were able to play in but then on the horizon you know it's just very clearly the world ended because there was a top-down view so i needed the train to look like it goes on and on and on and so that's why I ended up uh, doing this tiling. So, um, and I didn't want to use Photoshop. So there it is. Um, I hope that's helpful for folks. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments. I'll be sure to leave the um, GitHub project link in the description for this as well so that people can come and grab this if it's the kind of thing that they need. All right. Thank you all very much, and I hope you have a great one.